Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group and Discipleship Director, and I'm here with Business Administrator Michael Sullivan, or Sully, as we know and love. And he just delivered a message on Palm Sunday where we looked at who is he? Who mm -hmm. is Jesus? And I love how you um, asked the question, um, which you told about the story when you were in France mm -hmm. and how you were asking people, well, who do you say Jesus is? Mm -hmm. Just like we see in here. And there can be such a wide variety. And in this, Jesus tells us he is Lord. Mm -hmm. um, and so as this marks Holy Week, this triumphal entry into Jerusalem, um, it says the crowds, they're coming mm -hmm. and they're waving. Um, there was a question that came in around the crowds. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start there. Okay? okay. It said, do you think that a lot of the crowd that was present as he was riding in on the colt fell away during his public trial since he was unable to deliver them immediately from the Romans or possibly turned on him? What, mm -hmm. do, what do we know about that? Well, scripture didn't give us a head count of, you know, the people that ran out to see him. Uh, but I think there's maybe a few things that would suggest probably so. Number one, I think about his own disciples. Uh, I think about Peter, who Jesus says at their last supper together, not more than a week after this event, he says, hey, you're gonna turn away. And so here is Peter, this man who followed Jesus for three years, who does indeed turn away and not follow after him as Jesus is being led to the cross. So if Peter is our frontline indicator, of someone who was closely tied to Jesus falling away. I'm guessing this crowd who was somewhat loosely tied to him coming out in this moment, uh, probably you could expect the same. We know that Jesus does get put on trial before Pontius Pilate, and Pilate is going to turn to the crowd and say, okay, I myself am not gonna convict this man. I see no wrong uh, in what's going on here from a legal standpoint. And so he turns to this crowd, which is Jewish people and says, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to release uh, Barabbas or do you want me to lease, uh, release Jesus? And they choose to keep Jesus, release Barabbas, and the rest is so that, on the cross. That so that is an indicator to where most of the crowd yeah. was. I mean, they were screaming, crucify him, crucify mm -hmm. him. So again, we don't have a head count that tells us, yes, the same 500 people or 1,000 people or whatever it was gathered. But from Peter being a leading example and then just the decision, probably safe to assume it was a similar crowd that was making the call. Okay, so another question that came around was about the disciples as well. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that the disciples' response showed Jesus was Lord, not by asking questions, uh, but just following. You said the reason they were able to do this was because they had seen miracles mm -hmm. and Jesus had performed them in front of their own eyes. Um, so how do you suggest in today's day and age, seeing Jesus with our own eyes like the disciples did? It's a good question. Um, well, I think before the miracles, what you see is that they followed Jesus. Um, all the disciples, uh, you know, I think about, again, Peter, who's out fishing, and what does Jesus say? Hey, come follow me. Mm -hmm. And so I think the invitation is still there today. Jesus is alive today. Uh, and I think the invitation for us as disciples is to still follow him today. Now, what does that look like on this side? Well, I think... I would say three things. Number one, I think it's reading and studying his scripture. Um, I'm amazed, you know, even this passage this week, I've been in church a long time, uh, you know, from my youngest years. And this passage, there were just things that the Lord was illuminating to me that I had never seen before, things I'd never known before. I mean, even the response of the donkey, just where it says in Luke, it was written for the first time with something I'd never noticed before. So, Scripture is constantly teaching us uh, through the things that Jesus says, um, through letters from Paul. There's all these things where it's communicating truth. So I think that's the first thing is read Scripture. Understand Jesus' call on our life. What is his mission? Uh, so read. I think praying. Uh, we've been putting a big emphasis on that with resolve for more. Read the Bible daily and pray daily. Again, seeking the Lord, laying requests before him, and then sitting and listening. Uh, that's been a big thing I've been learning uh in a small group I'm a part of is what it looks like to sit and listen and receive from the Lord as opposed to 
always just talking, talking to God, yeah. uh, but to sit and listen and say, God, what do you want from me? What do you have for me? Uh, so I think reading and praying is huge. I think the second thing is serving. Mm. I am amazed when I am out serving, whether it's um, on a mission trip, like the one I mentioned with France, or uh, doing some work for someone else, um, whatever the case may be, when you serve, how you see Jesus in serving other mm -hmm. people. Um, and similar to that is the third thing I would say, which is community. Mm -hmm. I, even from my own marriage, uh, learning things about myself, uh, learning things about Jill, ways I can serve her uh, in our grow group that we've been attending. You learn things from different people who are at different paces in life, which is really exciting. Some people have been following Jesus for a long time and some who are just started. And the questions that these new believers ask, it really does, it does. It's like, that's a question I need to be asking on a daily basis. So I think those three things, uh, well, I guess four things, reading, praying, serving, and community really go in. Each week at our staff meeting, uh, staff link, we do God sightings before uh, we get into whatever uh, the agenda is for that staff meeting. And I always think about this one guy when I'm there, I'm trying to think, where have I seen God move this week? And there's this one guy, Alex, who every week he comes with a God sighting. And I'm like, what is different about Alex that he's coming with a God sighting every week and it's every other week or once a month for me at best, you know? Well, I look at Alex's life and he's doing these things. Mm -hmm. He's reading, he's praying, he is serving. He's mm -hmm. down at our bridging for he's tomorrow. He's sharing the gospel yes. and testimony all the time. All the time, he's out serving. Uh, he's, whether he is out in front of his house, at the gym working out, this guy is constantly serving. And he's in community, he's in uh, a church. We got to go to his church uh, not long ago and he and his wife, Christine, are plugged in. And they're growing and they're seeing God move because God's right there in front of them. So I, I think that's the keys. Um, to seeing God on a daily basis. It's still continuing to follow him today. Um, maybe not directly in his physical footsteps, but still being able to follow him today in those ways. That's a good word. Um, and I think all of us could ask ourselves the question, who is Jesus to me right now? Like mm -hmm. you pointed out, there's always ways that we can evaluate our life and say, Jesus, maybe you're not Lord of this area. Sure. And so I think as we move into Holy Week and we just reflect and pray and read his word about what Jesus did for us and who is it, who he is, this is such a good reminder. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Thanks. All right. And thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.